Thank you for joining me today to view this video. This webinar is designed to help you understand student growth percentiles or SGPs and the median school student growth percentile. In this webinar, I'll be sharing information with you about the rationale for student growth percentiles or SGPs, the calculation of individual student growth percentiles, reporting student growth percentiles to families, calculating the median school student growth percentile, the relationship between student growth percentiles and the Washington School Improvement Framework. And then I will share the percent of students by growth level and the median school SGPs for the 22-23 school year. We're going to start today with the individual student growth percentiles, how they are calculated and what they mean. First of all, why do we need them in the first place? Let's imagine that we have a student who's in grade four and level three or meeting standard on the Smarter Balanced Assessment in English Language Arts. They earned a score of 2490. The score is one point in time that shows us that they met standard. Now let's say this same student in grade five then scores a 2540 on the fifth grade SBA in English Language Arts. And that is an increase of 50 scale score points over the course of one year of learning. We need student growth percentiles to help us understand how this student is growing. The change in the score alone does not tell us how they're doing in comparison to their academic peers. And it doesn't tell us whether or not this amount of growth is a high amount of growth, a typical amount of growth, or a low amount of growth. And this is where student growth percentiles come in. So how are they calculated? So let's take a student who has a 50 scale score point, our sample student. He's gone from 2490 to 2540. And we're going to find a cohort of academic peers based on that student's prior performance. So the state looks for students with a similar academic background and they are selected from across the state with no consideration to their location, demographic, or program background. The amount of growth is determined for every student in that student's cohort of academic peers. So here we see our student with their 50 point gain and all of the students who have a similar academic background, perhaps they didn't score exactly a 2490, but statistically they are similar. We're going to determine their amount of growth as well. And when we do that, we will rank their growth from highest to lowest. And as we do that, we'll determine a percentile for each of our students. Here we see our sample student whose gain was 50 points, and they're in the 83rd percentile of their academic um, peers cohort. Now every cohort is different. So this student with a 50 scale score point is in the 83rd percentile um, of their academic cohort. But if they were in a different academic cohort, that 50 point gain might represent only a 43rd third percentile score. The 83 for a student growth percentile means that that student's growth of 50 points was better than 83% of the students in that student's cohort of academic peers. So as we look at each student's student growth percentile then, we can evaluate what that growth means relatively. For a student who's in the first to the 33rd percentile for a student growth percentile, they would be considered to have low growth. A student who falls in the 34th to the 66th percentile would be considered to have a typical growth. 
and a student has high growth when they fall in the 67th to 99th percentile. This is a sample of a family report for a specific student. This student in English language arts, which is on top, math is on the bottom here, they scored in sixth grade in 2022 a 2471 or a level two on the SBA in English language arts. In seventh grade, that same student scored a 2589 and reached level three or meeting standard. That student changed their score or added 118 points to their score in between the sixth and seventh grade year. And that was considered to be high growth because the student fell in the 90th percentile for student growth against their academic peers, the cohort of academic peers. Now this same student in grade six earned a 23.99 or fell in level one for um, the math SBA. In grade seven, the student earned a 24.40, still was in level one for the SBA in math, but had a 41 per, uh, point scale score change. And when compared to this student's cohort of academic peers, which for math is a different cohort, than they had for English language arts, because again, it's based on their prior academic performance. This student actually had typical growth. So though they did not change levels, their growth was considered to be typical. Here we have another um, example. And this student also took the ELA and the math test and was in two different cohorts one for ELA and one for math. In third grade, the student earned a 23.49 or level one. In fourth grade, still in level one, but this student own, uh, earned a 23.79 for a gain of 30 points, which is considered typical because the student had a student growth percentile of 38. In math, however, this student went from a level two with a score of 2,400 to a level one with a score of 2,338. And that student lost 62 points. When compared to their academic peers, that student was in the second percentile, so they had low growth. Now let's turn to the school median student growth percentile, which gives us a collective view of the student performance against their individual cohorts, and which is a significant factor in the Washington School Improvement Framework at 50% of your total score. So here we have our student who is in the 83rd percentile. The median school student growth percentile is going to be calculated for the entire school, for each grade, for each ethnic or racial group and for each program. And this student will fall into many of these. They will be in the all, they will be in their grade, and then they will be in their ethnic and program groups. So the first step is to find the student growth percentile for every single student in that student's school group. So, we could do it for their grade, their school, or a student subgroup. And remember that each of these students has a student growth percentile that is based on their own individual cohort. It is unlikely that they are all in the same academic cohort. Next, the media, the school, excuse me, the student growth percentiles for each student are ranked from highest to lowest. And finally, the median or the middle score is determined for that student group. So that number 64 is the median school student growth percentile for this group of students. It could be the third grade, it could be 
Hispanic or Latino students, it could be special education students. What this means is that 50% of the students in this group had student growth percentiles lower than this median score of the 64th percentile. And 50% of the students had scores higher than the median or the 64th percentile. Now, when we see a median school percentile that is a higher number, so we would consider 50 average, um, what this means is that collectively the student's performance was higher in general than their cohorts of academic peers. So in this case, the median school student growth percentile is 83. That means that a full 50% of the students had student growth percentiles that were higher than the 83rd percentile. So that's a very good score. Now the median school student growth percentile, which is again, measured for every grade, race, ethnic group and program, it ends up being 50% of the Washington School Improvement Framework for elementary and middle school and it is included in every single one of the student groups. So for example, uh, this is the all for the Washington um, School Improvement Framework and the school got a um, four for growth in ELA and a six for growth in math. That puts them at the fourth decile and the sixth decile respectively in the Washington School Improvement Framework. We hope that this webinar has been helpful in understanding individual student growth percentiles as well as median school student growth percentiles. If you have any questions about student growth percentiles or any other assessment or data questions, please contact Katherine Matthews, Director of Assessment and Research at 425-385-4058 or cmatthews at everettsd.org. Thank you.